Hello and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Thor Darkshield, and welcome to another episode of Let's Replay Ace Attorney Investigations. Last time, we checked out the cargo hold, hold it, and found that the uh, statue in question that Mr. LeBlanc has been trying to transfer for his country to a museum was actually a fake, and learned that the cargo hold was the actual scene of the murder, and learning bit by bit of the truth, we have one person to cross-examine now whose testimony does not match up with everything that we now know. So, it's time to question our final whole testimony. Let's do this. March 12th, 2019, 3.35 p.m. Cargo hold. Miss Mealy. Yeah. Miss Mealy! Huh? Do you recall what you said earlier? About when you answered some service call as we were... Departing from Zhongfa? Huh? You said that Mr. Hicks was sitting in his seat at that time. However, that is not simply possible. That is simply not possible. Because Mr. Hicks was dead long before he, we ever touched down Zhongfa. Miss Chamomile! Uh... Maybe I didn't see what I thought I did? No one could make a mistake so large, Miss Mealy! Um... But I make a lot... But I make that kind of boo-boo all the time. Ugh. This is getting nowhere. There must be a better way of resolving this contradiction. Very well. Miss Mealy, if you please, tell me about your alibi during that time span. From just before we were to land at 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. when the body was found. Are you telling me I'm a suspect, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Mealy's alibi. Oh, um, yeah. From three to four, I was, um, in the flight attendant's room, all by my lonesome self. Oh, um, yeah. And from five to six, I was, um, in the flight attendant's room, all by my lonesome self. How is a man supposed to react to a testimony like that? Miss Millie, wake up! Huh? Yeah. <sighs> she fell asleep again. It looks like we have... Um, we, it looks like the only way I'm going to be able to make... To wake her up is by pressing her. And I know just the testimony to do that. Mm. Let's press the fourth testimony. From three to four, I was, um... In the flight attendant's room, all by my lonesome self. Oh, um, yeah. From five to six, I was, um, in the flight attendant's room, all by my lonesome self. Hold it! So you were alone the entire time, were you? 
Yeah, no one else even popped in, popped their head in to say hi. Oh, well I think the contradiction just popped in to say hi. What should I do? Should I raise an objection? Uh, yeah. Miss Mealy, there is a clear contradiction embedded in your testimony. Huh? What are you talking about? It's not possible you were alone at the attendance room the whole time came from 5 to 6 a.m. I wonder if you would, like, take a look at... I wonder if you would be so kind as to take a look at this receipt, Miss Mealy. Huh? A receipt? For what? It's for the suitcase Miss Tenero bought. Now, if uh, he may direct your attention to the timestamp... As you can see, it clearly says 5.40 a.m., Miss Tenero. Yes? Huh? Why is the cure here? I thought you have her locked up by now. I requested that she be present as a witness so that we may straighten out your complex lie. Now then, Miss Tenero, between the hours of 5 and 6 a.m., you took a trip to the first class from first class down to the first floor in-flight shop, correct? Yes, I went to the shop to buy a suitcase. After which, I went straight to the attendance room to drop it off. And did you see Miss Mealy there at that time? Um, no. So, Miss Mealy, where were you, really, between the hours of 5 and 6 a.m.? Miss Kim Emil! Huh? Oh, um... The bathroom? I'll be the one asking the questions here. Yeah, maybe that's it. I probably just missed her. Nature calls, you know? Do you take me for a fool? That's a little too convenient to be true. Um, but it's the truth. Cross my heart. Hmm. I don't have enough concrete, conclusive proof to counter-argument her, argue her at this, or at this stage. Do you, you don't believe me, do you? But please, won't you give me a chance to hear me out? Reason for suspicion. Look, I know you're suspecting me because I'm one of the crew. But you think that maybe you should also suspect Miss Rhoda too? She's the one in charge of the elevator key card and the shop, you know. If you ask me, that makes her super suspicious. Please leave Miss Tenero out of this out of the conversation. Only you are under suspicion for now. I don't get it. Why are you covering for Miss Ten Rhoda all of a sudden? Oh, I get it. Maybe you've got uh, your eye on Miss Teno Miss Rhoda? Of course I'm keeping an eye on her. I can't very well Oh, let her escape, can I? Never mind. But you want to know something? Miss Rhoda actually kind of... I have absolutely no interest in people who can't appreciate he my sense of design.
Now's not the time for this sort of talk. Look, I know you're suspecting me because I'm one of the crew. But, uh, you think that then maybe you should also suspect Miss M Rhoda too? She's the one I'm in charge of the elevator key card in the shop. You know. And what are you in charge of, Miss Meal? Um, I take care of the attendance room. That doesn't count. Ah, uh, but I spend so much time in there. Here, it might as well be my responsibility. Mr. Edgeworth, Kemi is very talented in languages. So she assists passengers who may not speak English. Especially those who speak Borginian. And she is the only one in th on this flight who is fluent. Oh. Oh, you mean that kind of what am I in charge of? Why didn't you say so in the first place? What else could I have meant? Yeah, so I'm really good at Borginian. She's fluent in Borginian? Then I suppose you're in charge of processing documents in Borginian. Yeah, I take care of anything that has to do with Borginian. Hmm, very interesting. If you ask me, that makes her super suspicious. All I'm in charge of are the attendance room and the some Borginian stuff. Objection! So, you are the only one in this flight crew that speaks Borginian. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, I guess so. I studied abroad in Borginia for a while. If that is the case, then the signature on this document belongs to you, doesn't it? This is a falsified piece of documentation with only one purpose. To lead anyone to read it to believe that Mr. LeBlanc's statue was loaded in Europe. The only person who could have entered, prepared, or processed this document in Borginian is you, Miss Meal. Without your participation, the smuggling of the aloof red could not have been a, a cure. Don't sleep while I'm pointing my finger at you! Oh, I wouldn't dream of falling asleep on you, Mr. Edgeworth. It is exactly as you said. Are you confessing to have participated in the smuggling? No, far from it. It's true that I was the one who signed off that document. But you can't use the fact alone to make your allegation of smuggling stick. There is no direct cor correlation af after all. All you have is my signature on a piece of paper. Really? All you did was sign it. I neglected to check if the cargo had been loaded onto the plane properly. 
So sorry about that. Hmm. It seems that she's finally woken up. This is going to be one tough flight. Fight. Suppose, and this is just a suspi supposition. Even if I was involved in the smuggling, you can't throw oh, the charge of murder on me just like that. Objection! If you were involved in smuggling, you would have to strong motive to kill. Agent Hicks was in the middle of an investigation regarding the smuggling ring. And just when he was about to close in, he's killed by a, num a member of the of that ring. Well, did you ever stop to think that maybe Rhoda is the smuggling ring member? After all, unlike me, Rhoda has access to many things on this plane for work purposes. Hmm. Perhaps there is some element of a setup at play in this case. What are you talking about? Don't worry, I wasn't talking about you. I meant the killer. First, it was myself, and now it's Miss Tenero, who is under my, the microscope. Seems to me that our killer is going to great lengths to pin this crime on anyone they can. You have no proof that Rhoda is being set up, or that... And she isn't. Actually, I believe that she was indeed the intended target if from the very beginning. I believe that the plan was to push all of the blame on the crime of the crime for her. And this evidence will prove my suspicions. This will prove that the killer was out to frame Miss Tenero from the very beginning. Take that! The killer could have hidden the body anywhere, and yet they chose this suitcase. Why was that? Perhaps it was to move the body he up from the lower deck to the first floor. However, why go through the trouble to do so? The only way he, all of these actions make sense is if the killer wanted to frame Miss Tenero for the murder. Miss Tenero buys a suitcase on every flight she works at without fail. But should her suitcase be switched with the one containing the victim's body, that would put her in a very tight spot. Unfortunately, for the killer, the turbulence put an end to that plan. Hmm. There wasn't enough time to put the body back into the suitcase. Ergo, they made do with whoever was at hand adapted their plan, and tried to frame me as I lay unconscious on the floor from the turbulence. The killer went to hide hid the suitcase in the in-flight shop and brought the piggy bank back to the elevator in order to fabricate a false weapon. A lot of work for fruitless endeavor, wouldn't you agree? Sounds like the killer had a tough time too, huh? I mean, why did the killer need to frame someone that badly anyway? That is because of the s special circumstances surrounding this particular case. When the murder took place. No where the murder took place. 
The special circumstances is simply that the murder took place on the on a plane mid-flight. No matter which country's customs is quite strict in this day and age. So no matter what you do, the chances that the body will be found is very high. Therefore, there was no choice but to frame either Miss Tenero or myself. In other words, the only one who fits within the boundaries was the criminal's mode movements of the criminal's movements is not Miss Tenero or myself, but you, Miss Kemi Meal. Only you and you alone could be the killer. Yan and Are you done already? I was about to fall asleep again. Anyway, let's be honest here. You don't have anything on me other than the whole lot of circumstantial evidence. Ugh. I can see the outline of how the murder occurred, but I have no definitive evidence. And isn't there a piece of evidence that's still unaccounted for? Something that's still missing. Take that! I don't have any actual evidence. I thought not. But that's because it went missing and still is. Missing? What do you mean by that? In the complex puzzle that is this case, there was one piece I kept getting stuck on. And that is the victim's cell phone. Francisca? You were waiting on at the airport for a phone call from Agent Hicks' cell phone. Or at least, that's what you told me. That's right. But Agent Hicks' cell phone um, could not be found at the crime scene. You mean the killer took the phone with them? Precisely. I suspect that if we were to find the phone, it would lead us to the killer. <laughs> Come on, get serious. If the victim fell, in, fell to his death from that height, wouldn't his phone break as well? We won't know until we try a little experiment, will we? Franziska, I'd like to I'd like you to ask for your I'd like to ask for your assistance. You know the victim's phone number, do you not? Of course I do. Agent Hicks flown! It's ringing from somewhere, sir. I hear it, Detective. Now, where is it coming from? I know where. Ringing's coming from somewhere in here, sir. Leave no stern on turn, detective. We must find it. The ringing's coming from in here, sir. W what? No, it can't be. That's gotta be the victim's cell phone. Just whose locker is this, sir? It's Miss Tenero's. What? So, Mr. Edgeworth, how did it go? Where did you find the phone? 
I found it in the flight attendant's room. In Miss Tanera's locker. W what But... Rona Tanero! I don't know anything about the phone! It wasn't me! It wasn't me! Miss Bonkarma, was it? I suggest you arrest Miss Rhoda Tenero right away! Objection! Wait! I have a theory! He, this is related to the incident with the keycard. When the killer went to steal the keycard, they conveniently stashed the cell phone in Miss Tenero's locker at the same time. Objection! This is related to the keycard, alright. In the same way that we have zero proof that the killer did that just that. <sighs> the only voice that sings the truth is evidence. That is the that is the one bird I we cannot ignore. What should I do? Francisca's right. I can't offer baseless conjectures at this point. Alright then. Why did the culprit take the cell phone from Agent Hicks? It must have something very incriminating on it. Or in it. Hold it! What now, Miles Edgeworth? It's not over yet. We have yet to figure out why the killer took the phone. What? Inside this phone lies the final piece of incriminating evidence that will point us to our killer. We need to examine this phone in more detail. Okay. Ah, it's a camera lens. Come to think of it, I wonder. How exactly was Agent Hicks planning to preserve the crime scene of a smuggling? Franziska, I need you to confirm something. This cell phone, can it take pictures? Mr. Ranchworth, I can't believe you don't know about this kind of basic stuff, sir! This takes a ver this looks like a very similar similar model of my own. And mine takes pictures just fine. Do you think Agent Hicks could have taken some pictures with this? In particular, pictures of evidence as evidence are for this crime smuggling case? If so, I'd say there may be some very inconvenient photos in there for our killer smuggler. But the phone's all busted up, sir! Even a super prosecutor can't repair a broken phone. <laughs> I'll find a way, don't you worry about that! Yawn. May I go back to sleep now? The LCD screens on the inside and outside are broken, that's for sure. But that's also reason enough to believe that the killer wasn't able to erase the data. What? What do you mean by that, Franziska? It looks like our killer her, isn't very familiar with electronics. The phone still rang when I called it. Meaning that only the LCD screens are broken. It's possible that the photos are still there inside, waiting to be accessed. All we need to do is transfer the data to my phone. Franziska, your phone if you please. 
Very well. It's transferring. All right. Displaying it now. This is... Agent Hicks. Hicks was almost certainly trying... Was most certainly trying to attain some evidence for this smuggling case. Hey! The yellow red's nowhere to be seen in this pic, sir! But this has no meaning as a piece of evidence is in their in this murder case, right? Ouch, she's right, sir. Her there's not much we can find out from this about Asian Hicks's killer, sir. This is it? Is this the end? Is there really nothing in this photo that we can use? Oh yes, there is. Boxes of bed sheets. These are still in the cargo hold. There's something unusual about them in particular. But I can't shake the feeling. Uh, if you're just playing around, mind if I go home? Yes, I mind. I need to focus on what's different from back then. Okay, it wasn't that. Is it these? What's all this? Hmm? Oh, they are cargo ship from Virginia to Zhongfei! So, the reason they aren't here now is that they were dropped off in Zhongfa. Mr. LeBlanc, can you tell me the contents of these boxes? Unfortunately, there is no English written on them anywhere. Hmm? One cluster of boxes is written in Borginian. It says... It is cloth in English. Cloth? Could it be? Is this where the killer... What? What are you... What is that scary face? Miss Meal. Yes? It appears Agent Hicks was no ordinary investigator. He left us a piece of evidence after all. A sticking, a striking piece that will point out who his killer is. Ha! Ah! Maybe you shouldn't force your mistaken reading of a simple picture, Mr. Edgeworth. The Virginian cargo, oh, and this piece of evidence will point us straight to the killer. Take that! And what is that supposed to be? Supposed to prove? The killer used this piece of cloth to wipe up the blood hub they had spilt. But there was one thing that bothered me this whole time. Where did it come from? And now I have finally found my answer to this very in this very photo. The cargo hole that was unloaded in Zhongfa had cloth written on it. In Borginian, that is. And this is where the killer grabbed a piece of from the grabbed a piece from to clean up the blood with. That's right. The killer was someone who could read and understand Borginian. And the only crew member that fits the description is you, Miss Camille. Ha! That's pretty flimsy. The killer probably searched through all of the boxes looking for something to use. 
When you're frantic, you don't care if the box is in English or Persian. Sorry, but I cannot agree with your assessment of the killer's indiscriminate nature. What? There was no need for the killer to tear through these boxes at random at all. And if the killer supposedly could not comprehend Borginian, well then. Logically, he the killer would have opened this box first. Take that! Hey, it says bed sheets in English right on the box, sir! Precisely. And bed sheets would be perfect for cleaning up blood, wouldn't you say? So what are you trying to say? That if I were a criminal, the box of this box of bed sheets would have been in what I would have spotted first. However, the killer chose to use some Borginian cloth. Do you have an explanation for that? The killer didn't want anyone to know that the real scene of the crime was at this cargo hold. So they were afraid... Oh, oops, I accidentally skipped that dialogue. However, the Borginian cloth, well, that's a horse of a different color. It's because the killer knew that it was going to be unloaded in the Republic of Zhongfa. That's right. That is why the Borginian cloth was used. And the only Borginian rear on board who could have made such a cal calculated decision is you, Cammy Meal. You and you alone. Ah. It would be the ver very easy for us to confirm if any of the boxes were resealed. All we would have to do is contact the Zongfa authorities in time. We have even found other evidence to incriminate our killer with these boxes. Uh. So, what do you say, Miss Meal? Why not confess to your crime here and now? Or would you rather wait and see what we find from our investigation in Zongfa? Breakdown! Oh, no! He... He was Interpol! I couldn't stop it! He brought... I brought him here. Her, he started taking pictures. I... I couldn't be found out. I was scared. I was in trouble. I... 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 We finished making all the arrest arrangement to take the suspect in, sir. Very good, detective. What about the smuggling rope? Oh, did she say he anything about that? They're taking her down to the precinct now. Hopefully, we can get more out of her there. However, when she approached the topic. She just started foaming at the mouth. It was scary, sir. She probably wasn't prepared to commit a murder all of a sudden. One thing is for sure, her the ring behind this whole mess has mean serious business. It looks like there's a lot more to this case than meets the eye. 
Mr. Edgeworth. I just wanted to say how much I appreciate everything you did. Thank you very much. It was nothing. In fact, you should be the one... I should be the one thanking you for your cooperation. But truly, he, if it wasn't for you, I... I might not be here right now. Instead, I can continue to serve our passengers as a flight attendant. Um, I hope that, well, please accept this as a token of my appreciation. But that's... I see. You don't have to take it if you don't want it. N no I mean, I would never turn down a lady's generous offer. Oh, thank you. I'm sure it will serve you well. And remember, her, we here at iFly Airlines are always ready to serve, Mr. Edgeworth. Thank you. I'll keep that in mind. Now I must bid you farewell. Oh, may all your skies be blue, no matter where you go. I can't believe we wound up investigating the whole day, sir! Her, but boy, it was fun! Speak for yourself. My day was filled with earthquakes, elevators, and false charges! By the way, where's Franziska? Oh, she's filling out some custom paper paperwork for her departure. Departure? Yeah, Miss Von Karma's always really busy, sir. She's been flying from country to country to chase down some leads regarding her case. Detective? Can you cancel the car I had you reserve earlier? You got it, sir! Francisca? I thought I told you who when I first landed. Hit, I have no time for idle chatter. I have no intention of wasting your time. However, it has been a while since we last met. I also have no time for a familiar rem reminiscence. Just who do you think I am? You are from Ziska von Karma, a very proud prosecutor deserving of much respect. Hmm. Until... Until only a little while ago, I was a... but a wretched mutt who was always losing to you. A dancing... Hint... 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 Peria, uh, living her life, he found the name and fame of her invincible father's belt. True, your father Manfred von Karma didn't lose a single case for 40 years as a prosecutor. However, I wouldn't say he was invincible. What are you talking about? The group I am on, on the trail of, is a little more troublesome than most. The smuggling route who we found this time is only one silver in the big picture. Sliver in the big picture. Sounds like a dangerous assignment. You really don't have to worry. I can take care of myself. I believe that. Yes, I suppose you can. Plus, there is another agent on this case with me. Oh, another agent? He's a star among Interpol agents, and has the highest successful rate to arrest date. Who knows? 
You may even run into him one day. Hmm. I was simply caught up in this one case. I hardly see why we would cross paths. I suppose. But I doubt he would say the same. I'm not following you. You'll understand soon enough. The flight... The fight has only just begun, Miles Edgeworth. I'll be back in this country soon enough. And when I am, you can be sure I'll pay you back in full. And just like that, she's gone. Huh, sir? Thank goodness, I can finally rest easy knowing I won't have to watch for watch out for her whip. Detective Gumshoe, I want to thank you for all of your help and cooperation. Ah, it was nothing, sir. I was just happy to be able to work with you again. Uh -oh. I think I'm going to celebrate by adding a little extra salt to my instant noodles tonight. Just how much did you cut his salary by, Miss Francisca? Detective, I was wondering if you might give me a ride down to the prosecutor's office. Sure thing, sir. I'll even fly down the road. Hold in a patrol car if you want. Don't make me remind you, detective. Safety first. Thus, I solved the first case upon my arrival home. Francisca von Karma, the smuggling route she was after. The leaders of that ring was had already put their trump card into play. And the players on the other side of this war. They would begin to make themselves known through the Nexus incident. Hmm? Edgeworth speaking. Ah, uh, finally! I've called hold who knows how many times earlier, but I couldn't get through. And you are? Ah, oh, you have forgotten my voice, Miles, my boy. Mr. Animal? Ernest Animal? Correct. Ah, so you do remember me. I know it's rather sudden, but I can't ask this of anyone else. There's been an incident, Miles. My son, he's been kidnapped. And thus concludes this case for Ace Attorney Investigations. When we come back... We will start case number three, the Kidnap Tournament Turnabout. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did and would love to see more, hit that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment if you want. Ring that bell to be notified when our next video comes out. We do new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and occasionally Saturday and Sundays. All this helps my channel to grow so you have more videos to enjoy. Until the next video... This is Sword Archild, signing off. Have a good night, folks, and enjoy the, the trailer for the next case. <laughs>